Living with Water is all about collaborating uh, in order to develop sustainable and resilient solutions to sea level rise. My name is Case Lockman. I'm an associate professor of landscape architecture and a principal investigator for Living with Water. Research has suggested that we're going to see major impacts of sea level rise up to one meter in this century and beyond in the coming centuries along the south coast of British Columbia, where we're seeing major impacts on critical infrastructures, we're seeing impacts on coastal ecosystems, and we're seeing impacts on community livelihoods. My name is Vanessa Lewick, and I am a researcher in residence at Pacific Institute for Climate Solutions, and I am a co-lead for the Living with Water project. As the sea level rises higher, many of our infrastructures that we have, our dikes, our levees, our seawalls, will fail. At some point, we won't even be able to build dikes that will protect us from that water. So in Living With Water, we're saying, well, why don't we start thinking about that now instead of waiting 50 years when we'll make huge disasters? My name's Angela Daniluk, and I'm a biologist at the city of Vancouver. Part of the False Creek area is in a floodplain, and we've done some hazard mapping and modeling to understand what the impact of a future flood would look like. As a coastal community, we are vulnerable to the impacts of sea level rise, and we're not ready. This project is personal to me, growing up in the Netherlands and seeing how the idea of walls and dikes have been exported all around the world, and understanding that these solutions don't work anymore in our contemporary society. There's a term called coastal squeeze, which means that the coastal area will be squeezed between the dike and the water, and so this will drastically decrease the amount of area that's available for fish and, and migratory birds. So they'll have to find a different place, but this phenomenon is happening all around the coast, so there probably is no place for them to resettle. So we somehow have to figure out how to provide more space for coastal ecosystems, and that's very challenging in a very dense build-up environment that's seeing many competing interests. There's two pieces to dealing with sea level rise. The one has to do with mitigation, which has to do with changing our behaviors and, and limiting the amount of greenhouse gases that go into the atmosphere. The other has to do with adaptation, which is accepting that we're seeing this change happening and figuring out how we can change our physical infrastructures to deal with the consequences of sea levels rising. The unique thing about living with water is that it brings together different components. So it's focusing on kind of governance, it's focusing on underground solutions, and it's focusing on human values. And that's not been done before. One of the challenges within living with water are all the different participants. We have multiple different governments and levels of government. We have lots of different nonprofit organizations. We have lots of different private organizations, for-profit organizations, and we have public-private partnerships. So think about Metro Van. And this creates a challenge because we have to get them all to work together. And as you can imagine, that can be quite difficult. Residents and other community members are really looking for a change. They're getting nervous about being flooded constantly. They see the changes in the ground, in the precipitation patterns, in the storms that are coming. So everyone is understanding that we need to change the way that we've been doing things. Most of us are not comfortable with the idea of relocation. Most of us are not particularly comfortable with a dike being removed. And this is all called social acceptance, how well society accepts certain solutions to something. And so by talking about these things, we're bringing them into the space where we can start talking about it. If you don't talk about it, you won't be able to do it later. And False Creek is a really good example of this. The city of Vancouver is a coastal community, and so it's on the edge, literally, of the Salish Sea. And Bells Creek is a small inlet that's on the edge of English Bay. There's a lot at stake. It's economic benefits for the community and the Lower Mainland. It's healthcare, it's 
infrastructure. Some of our wastewater treatment facilities are in the floodplain, so there's a real benefit to acting in response to this challenge of sea level rise. Ultimately, we just need to make some decisions here about what solutions we want to implement. And those decisions should reflect our values as a community, as well as the technical information. Let's talk about what matters to people. And when you ask that question, you hear stories about culture, about recreation, about the environment, as well as safety. I think success for living with water looks like a legacy of a model of how we come together to solve these tough, tough problems. When people start changing how they view solutions, if they're willing to take down those dikes and work with nature, that's success. Living with water really is about knowledge and knowledge transfer. It's about cross-cultural learning and try to understand how we can bring this together in ways that are easily communicable uh, and also bring different knowledges together in ways that has not been done before.